Welcome to New Scope. This is the first edition of New Scope in the year 2022. And we will be taking, if you like, a periscope look at what 2022 will be like. But this time, we'll be zeroing in on business and investments. What will it look like in this new year? And to do that with me is a very important guest who should know what he's talking about, having been a banker and is involved in the energy sector as we speak. But his identity, you'll have to wait until after this time out, then I will be introducing him to you too. Welcome back to New Scope. Today, I just told you earlier on that we will be talking about the business environment in Nigeria for 2022. What would we like it to be like? How do we see Nigeria's business and investment future, especially at the beginning of this year? My guest on the show today is a gentleman. He's been a banker. He was the um, pioneer managing director of Keystone Bank. Before then, he had had stints working with Echo Bank Transnational as well as um, Citibank. And these are very reputable banking institutions. Today, he is the founding CEO of Proton Energy. Proton Energy is a Nigerian company that wants to set up a 150 megawatt power station somewhere in Delta State. So my guest on the show is Mr. Oti Yukumi. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Patrick. Uh, thank you for having me on. All right. You are involved in a big investment in Nigeria, which was, uh, by this we're talking about the Proton power plant that you're building Correct. somewhere in Nigeria. So what type of atmosphere and environment would you say would, would make for optimum investments and um, returns on investment or even making a climate that will be conducive for investment? Uh, 2022 has come upon us. Uh, we believe as we move from a pandemic to what is now described as an endemic, so that whole global tension is, uh, is changing and modifying uh, for our nation. Uh, we, see, we see some bright, some bright spots for 2022. Uh, yes, there are challenges. Uh, what gives us encouragement is that if you look at the... Uh, the recent statistics uh, from the uh, Nigerian Bureau of Standards for quarter three of 2021, we had a 4% GDP growth, which is quite positive. Uh, and I would believe translating that into 2022, uh, more GDP growth, uh, increased productivity, uh, increased employment, these are all very positive things that will help our nation. Of course, we have the headwinds. Uh, which we'll talk about a little bit later, the issues around the subsidy, the pricing of petroleum uh, products, etc. But overall, uh, I'll just share some high-level statistics. Uh, the top five companies uh, in, in 2021 being um, Dangote, MTN, Airtel, Boa, and one other, they had uh, total uh, revenue, total profit of close to 800 billion naira in 2021 for their last financials. And out of that, they paid a tax base of about 380 billion naira. And they're employing uh, a quarter of a million people. Almost uh, one quarter, just these five companies, almost one quarter of what you have in the federal uh, civil mm -hmm. service. So, so really, what we need is a more private sector-led uh, growth in Nigeria. The focus on infrastructure. So I believe we need to see more policy consistency. We are also approaching uh, the year before the elections. So that is a very important decimal for, for us. So I, I believe for the first half of this year, maybe even to the first three quarters, let us have a focus on business. And of course, politics will start creeping in from the middle of the year. But if the government can take full throttle and just push these other initiatives that they've been on, you know, the infrastructure focus, uh, working on the power sector uh, 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 growth, working on the, the roads, the, 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 the second Niger Bridge, and all of these initiatives, create, you know, housing, 
let's just create the environment and get policy initiatives done. Sorry. We're looking at food inflation. I don't know what the, what, what the official rate yes. says, yes. but I know that I'm spending at least 50% more on food than I used to. Yes. And so how do we balance out, how do we balance out what we are told on a macro level? Yeah. And you know, hold that against what we feel and what we're experiencing on a micro level. Yes, in fact, you are quite correct. Uh, the, the macro inflation, in fact, when they released the results, I think as of November last year, our inflation rate has come down to roughly around 15%. That is between November 2020 and November 2021. And it's, I think that's almost the lowest official in, in like one year. But at the same time, you are right, we all feel the impact. The, 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 the bag of beans, That's uh, right. Taito sardine, That's right. of course, uh, the uh, LPG gas, the gas, that you're cooking gas, gas, yes, the cooking gas. Uh, and, and all of these things are going up. In fact, uh, there was a report done by, uh, by FDC, Bismarck Rewane, that said that uh, if you take a basket of 10 goods, the, the inflation is almost 80%. I think there's also a lag factor. Some of these productivity enhancements, some of this job creation, uh, there's, there's a while before they come into effect. Okay. okay. So, but at the same time, people are spending the money today. So you are kicking the money, spending much higher, and the benefits are coming in future. Okay. So we need. We well, need I expected. I, 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 I expected. That is what I expected. <laughs> so, but 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 there's positive signals. Uh, inflation is trending down. Uh, we think that what will be beneficial is that, you know, if we need to tackle some of the. The excesses, like this whole subsidy debate, is very political, and people feel it. It's very emotive. But we believe quite strongly that um, it is time to buy the bullet and let market forces drive the price of petrol. It would appear that the business community, the yes. investment community, yeah. would like to bite that bullet yesterday. Yes. However, there is, as you said, it's emotive and yeah. it's political yes. and all whatnot. Why have we not collectively, and I mean investment community and the yeah. general population why have we not come to a consensus over it yes it, it, it's it's been running now for what almost 15 20 years on and off over various administrations but i think it is now very clear because if you look at the price comparisons of petrol in nigeria and our and our, all our adjoining nations or even look at it in other the open countries is... the pressure is quite significant so so we need to reflect market forces of course, we have the Dangote refinery that is going to be coming up uh, in, in the near future. Touch wood. Touch, yeah, touch wood. Uh, and we have all the other focuses on the fertilizer complex. So there's very important developments there. The important thing is, though, that what I was leading to is we need to have a trust. Is the trust component between the there's citizens. There's a trust deficit. There's a trust deficit. So, for instance, now, to alleviate, to alleviate this that, petrol okay, subsidy. Sorry, yeah. That policy of... 5,000 naira to 40 million yes. people. It, straight away, it sounds to me, it sounds to me like bomb comp to me. <laughs> but then I'm then again, I, I'm, not a, I'm not an economic yes. specialist. Yes. But, but what is your view on that? Does that begin to address the issue? I, yes, it, you know, some people look at it and say the amount of money you are spending there is almost as much as even the subsidy. So why remove the subsidy? But we have to do that structural reform to price the petroleum product properly. But what you need to do is that that 40 million people, uh, that's what I'm leading to the trust deficit. Nigeria is 200 million people. So if you give 40 million people, 5,000 or 10,000, 40 million of 200 million is 20%. Uh, that means one in every five. If I walk five people yeah. on the road, I'll see one person that yeah. is benefiting from it. But the problem today is that we don't see that. You'll have seen your driver, or your MIGAD, or your vulcanizer, or your mechanic, or somebody, or the Eco Disco staff who has benefited out of this potential uh, uh, situation. So, when we do it this time, we've got the database, the NIN, NIN database, we've got the Telcos data, we've got BVN, we have, we have the systems. In other countries, in the United States, uh, even here in, I think, Benin, Togo Republic, they have, they've all done similar things, and you can feel it. So, we need to do it in such a way that it is transparent. And that will give an initial uh, alleviation for at least part of this year to while this other uh, subsidy however, uh, process however, goes on. Our yeah. recent history has made it very difficult for the people 
to trust. That is well, the issue. Let yes. me go forward to your business. Yes. You're in the energy sector. Yes. And um, you had described the situation of the peculiarity of 2022. Yes. Because, you know, elections. Yes endemic and all whatnot yes. so that, that so you've made allowances for the constraints that that will put on your yes. investment so tell us how long has it been for you yeah. no excellent question uh we are developing uh a 150 megawatt combined cycle power plant and we are uh, it's 150 megawatt which is which is close to uh uh and this was about five yeah, percent yeah five percent of the, the national, current national, current national generation, generation capacity we, we have been on this journey now for close to eight years, which has been, a, like I told somebody, one of the conferences I spoke to in, um, in the UK sometime back, a very painful eight years. Uh, it, it, you know, so as an investor, we've had some challenges, but we want to take a much more a glass half full approach. Okay? Uh, the key thing we need in this country is policy consistency and the enabling environment being created by the government, which means the necessary agreements have to be in place and in place quickly. This is now more important. Are these agreements that need um, sovereign backing? What, what that, when, yes. when you're talking about these agreements? Yeah. Yeah, there are some that need sovereign backing. Then there are some basic commercial agreements that involve, in the case of a power plant, what we call your off-taker. So you'll have an agreement with your off-taker. I will sell you this. you buy from me for so many years at this price. Part of the problem was that we needed to stabilize the pricing. And uh, I we must give, I know it's not a popular perspective, but credit must go to President Buhari that since November of 2020, we have now had what we call the service-based pricing for power. It is not pop popular, but what is happening today is that people are more conscious about their use of power and electricity. I can tell you that. I can tell you that. Are, are you following me? When you're in the UK and the US, you turn off your light, you turn off your AC. In I, Nigeria, I'm doing, I'm doing that now. In Nigeria, we didn't used to do that. I'm, I'm doing that We used now. to leave it on and let it cool very well. I'll go and come back from the supermarket. Mm -hmm. But now we are all very focused. So your consumption is more appropriate, but at the same time, the price needed to be re reflected. So the pricing is now in the right direction. Uh, also, the discos have gone through a lot of uh, a lot of work, supported by the central bank, supported by the regulator NEC. Uh, now, collections. A report just came out two days ago. The collections by the discos, as of December 2020, was about 60 uh, percent. Now it's gone up to 70 percent. Okay. So the collections are on the uptrend, which means they are going to get more money to be able to fund okay. more additional investment and and you know which right. a more bankable sector okay you said you had a quote-unquote painful eight years <laughs> yes. in an ideal setting yes. how long should that gestation period be for a greenfield investment yes i'll give you an example uh four years ago i went to egypt i went to a plant called in Benisweff. this plant is uh 2400 megawatts almost half of nigeria's entire capacity is in that plant it, it, it was being built by siemens and el Swedi. it that was done in two years from agreement to construction to electrons on the grid. So, yes, we can do it in Nigeria, but we need faster initiatives. And also, we'll, we need to also move with speed because this is a gas-fired plant. All right, just hold yes. on to that. Yes. We'll take a short break now. And when we come back, we will continue on this very important tilt in the discussion. <laughs> It's game on as the process of choosing your most preferred contender for Nigeria's next chief executive in 2023 is now in full swing. Go to www.silverbirdtv.com to click a yes for your choice from the list of over 50 individuals, men and women who have been identified as probable contenders for the position of Nigeria's next chief executive in 2023. Remember to go to www.silverbirdtv.com and click yes to choose your preferred contender. Welcome back to New Scope. Yes, my guest is O.T. Ikomi. O.T. Ikomi is uh, the CEO of Proton Energy, and they are a Nigerian company investing in the power sector, building a 150 megawatt power station somewhere in Delta State. So you were telling me about this um, power station in Egypt, yes. and, and to your knowledge, from the point of agreements up to the point of commissioning and actually generating power was a two-year two year, gestation yes, period. Yes. You've been at it for eight years. Yes. Does that make you... And you're, you, what, you're, what you're building is about 10, 
a little under 10 percent yes. of the national five percent yes and no, but of the size of the one in egypt oh correct yes no so how does that make you feel being a nigerian yeah at uh, we some of us we 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 are nigerians we of course you have the challenges, but we are, we are, there are some of us. Your we, optimism. Yeah, our optimism, but after a while, your optimism gets tested. But in spite of that, uh, the key issue was that we needed to get the pricing right in the sector, which was what I spoke about earlier. Fortunately, the pricing is now in the right direction of power. Because you have a situation where you, you the investor, and you, the power generator, was going to be getting less than you know what the consumer you know was, was you know was, was being uh, was being charged but the, the, it's been readdressed so that the consumer price at least is slightly higher uh, previously the price was was higher the other way i meant so now it's, it's more balanced so, so, so right now you can get funded the people who fund these type of projects yes. have a little bit more comfort a bit more comfort because they needed to see that the macro poly, uh, power sector was more fungible was more liquid and the policy environment yes. is more conducive yes so the policy environment is more conducive so we must thank the, the central bank has done some very good work here because they've given some facilities to the discos uh, the regulator neck has equally done some very good work uh, and then there's an optica in the middle called enbet the nigeria bulk electricity trading company yes they buy from jenkos like us and sell to discos and, they, you know, they are in the, retail if you like to, uh, the, to the disco so They've also had uh, some change in, uh, in the management and the board, but they have now kind of stabilized. So we are looking to them uh, to be able to uh, conclude some new projects like us, because there are certain agreements between them and us that need to be concluded like yesterday. Okay. Yes, so when those agreements are concluded, it will now usher in additional new generation. Even though this generation will only come but, in but about you, three or four you, years but time. You, you're, you're, you're operating at a time when fossil fuels are on the way out and renewable energy seems to be the one the, the magnet yes. for funding yes so how have you been able to as it were attract the funding that is necessary for your type of investment that that's a, such an excellent point nigeria has 206 trillion square cubic feet of gas reserves we've signed we've signed the petroleum industry act you will hear the honorable minister of state for petroleum uh, yeah, Silva said this is the decade of gas. So we've got these gas reserves, but we have to move with speed. And in fact, both the vice president, uh, Professor Shinbajo, and the president have both spoken about the need for more funding to support fossil fuels in Africa and in Nigeria. They spoke about this before COP26. Yeah, they spoke about this even in COP26. So, but it is very imperative. So it's not just so you need gas for power gas for fertilizer gas for methanol gas for industries we need to quickly because if we don't mobilize this international funding unfortunately we don't have all the funding locally we have to attract some of the funding internationally so we need to move with speed but for you to get that funding you need to have the prerequisite agreements now that the sector is improving so on our own project we believe that by uh, middle of this year we reach what is called financial closes like fid uh, construction will start uh, you know in the second half of the year there will now be productivity and employment in Delta State, contribute to Nigeria, and then all the way because because for, 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 actually the, um, for profits. The construction stage of projects yes. like this yes. is also a boom to employment. Oh, yes. And there's, there are multiplier, Correct. There are multiplier effects to the communities. But there has been, I have had reports of very hostile local community engagement with investors yes. is that something that you have experienced especially in the niger delta and you are operating within the niger yeah, delta yeah. so what can be done to curb the excesses of local community and i use this word guided legumes, yes yes who extorts money from investors it's it needs a very balanced combination because when you operate in a community uh, you must be able to show value and support to the community. But at the same time, it does not mean that uh, the community will overtake the project or take all the jobs. So what, what usually happens is uh, with some of the older firms, they have a memorandum, memorandum of understanding, an MOU. Even a global a, one. A, a GMOU, GMOU, you got it. So like a, a firm like Seplat uh, had a GMOU, uh, and that, that helped them 
uh, agree uh, terms with the community. In our own case, we have very had engagement with the community. Uh, there's a certain amount of jobs and a certain amount of uh, supply contracts that we are willing to give to community members, provided they meet the necessary levels. You know, you must be qualified. Okay, so we, for instance, yeah. we have we have jobs around uh, unskilled workers, semi-skilled workers, and still we have various percentages agreed with the community. So we have to support. Now, let us look into another very important issue in the power matrix. There's this issue of this. There was a lot of noise around the Siemens contract with the government and all whatnot. What are the details of that, and how will that impact on the? Um, power equation in Nigeria? Very important initiative is called the Presidential Power Initiative, PPI. And this is a, an agreement that emanated between uh, the then Chancellor of Germany, Angela Merkel, and President Buhari. And the idea is, is being run by Siemens, which is a, a German company, uh, to improve the, the capacity and transmission of the Nigerian power grid from 5,000 megawatts now to 25,000 megawatts in 2025. By doing that, uh, some of the stranded capacity that we have now that has been generated and lost will be wheeled. New generation, like our own power plant, Proton, will come in and complement. So the whole idea, you will then have more power for Nigeria. And over time, as more generation comes in, the transmission losses will keep reducing. And in time, even the power prices we have now will start coming down. Okay. So it's a very good idea that over time, long term, <coughs> it will be more competitive and prices will come down. So the Siemens initiative is one of those but, major but initiatives. But not too long ago, we, we understood that there were some hiccups in the, um, in the delivery of that initiative. Yes, there, there, there are a number of uh, approvals that were required. I think two weeks ago, uh, the Federal Executive uh, Council just gave one important approval, and they will now be executing uh, uh, some of their, their deliveries. So I believe, from what I understand, by quarter three of this year, 2022, we'll see the first impact. So the idea is that in the first one year, it will go from 5,000 megawatts to 7,000 megawatts of generation and transmission. And then after that, keep ramping up quite quickly, focusing on transmission, focus on the distribution with the discos, so things like their substations, will be enhanced, then eventually with the generation companies, the Jenkos will also feed in. So but, it's, it's a multifaceted... Uh, uh, but, but, uh, but as we speak right now, our generation, our, our transmission, our ability to transmit yeah. power to the eventual um, consumer yes. is compromised. Uh, but we're also not producing nearly enough, we're not generating nearly enough for a market as big as 200 million people. Correct. Yes, I mean, we, we are generating 5,000 megawatts. We can transmit about 7,000 megawatts. We are 200 million people. By comparison, South Africa is about 40, 50 million people, but it produced 40,000 megawatts. So South Africa is producing almost 10, 10 times. times the generation of Nigeria with, uh, with one-fifth of, uh, of the population. So you can see the, the inverse ratio. But these are things that there's, the, there's what is called the Power Sector Recovery Plan, the PSROP, which is being driven uh, by, the Minister of, by the Ministry of Power, uh, Ministry of Finance, and the Presidency. And there are key elements that are all moving to address this. this uh, all right. We, we spent a lot of time on power for yes. good reason, because yes. without power, the economy yes. is... Uh, so so the, 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 all our discussions about power ties into the general good of the economy. Correct. Uh, so... Uh, you've been sounding rather optimistic, so we want to end this right now. Yes. And you just tell us what, um, what the, the basis of your optimism and what you think the end um, scenario will look like at the end of this year, for yes. instance. There, 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 are, there, are, there are a few reasons for our optimism. Uh, one is, as I mentioned, a number of the infrastructural build, the infrastructural repositioning is, is currently in place. That is one. There's a focus also on increasing the tax base, uh, but we have to do that in a very balanced manner, not to, not to overburden business. With some sensitivity. With some sensitivity. But also, you must realize that just two weeks ago, 
We did the 5G auction. Nigeria raised $547 million. So almost half a billion dollars. So we're getting monies from uh, the auction. We have the Euro bond auction that we're raising about $4 billion. There's a plan to sell some uh, privatized assets next year. So overall, there's an increased pool of revenues coming into the government, even despite the that pandemic. When properly utilized. When properly utilized. And our, our, my own personal uh, wish is that whatever palliatives we bring in, like this plan for the 40 million Nigerians at the bottom of the ladder to get a certain amount, it should be done transparently. Despite the long journey, we are excited to continue to support our All nation, right. Nigeria. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure talking to you, OTE Ekomi of Proton Energy. It would appear that um, we're starting this year on a good note, yeah, on an optimistic note. Certainly, certainly. The, the future is bright and the, and the pandemic is also moving to an endemic and things are also going to normalize on the health side. So we need okay. to... Thank you very much. Yes. OT Ekomi, Proton Energy. Well, there you have it. We're starting this year on a positive note. And let's just hope that it continues and that we things get demonstrably better until next week when i come your way again this is patrick doyle on new scope wishing you all the best in this new year 2022